Hi guys, and welcome to part four of the Skyrim Special Edition Mod Ramble for Chapter 4. Wait, I hear you cry. What happened to part three? Did I miss part three? Yes, you did. But not because you didn't see it in my video list, because I never uploaded it. I was basically recording it, and I was finding problems non-stop and having to go off and fix them. And, I mean, it even included some fixes, like reverting from a version of a mod, specifically Majestic Mountains. I had to revert from version 2 to version 1.82 because I found a strange grey rock. And by grey, I mean it was a sort of shiny, smooth, shimmering, alien grey. It was weird. Whoa, that's not good. What the hell is that? What? The hell. So I had to revert back to that. And and I had a few other things I needed to fix, including Dindalod. Dindalod was being a little strange. I was trying out 3D trees. And 3D trees in... For those of you that don't know, Dindalod just makes the distant terrain look a lot better. That's the simple explanation for it. It makes distant terrain look a lot better. And I was using a 3D option that made the distant trees 3D rather than the sort of 2D billboards that they use. Um, and they looked great when I was stood still. They really did look a lot better than the normal ones. But they were also slightly different shape and size to the ones they got replaced with when you move towards them. Because if you see now, if you look at the trees in the distance, you'll see every now and again, they'll change ever so slightly as the flat version becomes the 3D version. In fact, I'm not, I'm having difficulty seeing it at the moment. Well, you, you will see it anyway. And it is noticeable, but it's not too in your face. But with the 3D tree option, it was horribly in my face because the shape and size of the tree would often be different. And so, stood still, everything looked better. But as soon as they moved around, the pop-in effect was so much greater than with the 2D Dindalod. So I ended up reverting back to... I'm, I'm hoping it's going to do it now, if you, if you stare at the trees. The thing is, is you have to stare at the trees to see the transition. There you go, you saw some of them. Believe it or not, with the 3D trees, the, that transition, you couldn't miss it. It kept dragging your eyes to it every time it happened when moving. I may have been doing something wrong, but in the end, I just went back to the 2D option. It still looks a gazillion times better than the vanilla Skyrim. If you want to see a full list of the mods and the versions I'm using, you can find them down below. Anything that's new will be marked as new. You're going to notice that I've not actually added that many mods this time, about 9 or 10. I did actually try out about, I don't know, maybe 30. Some of them I rejected, and some of them I've put on a maybe later list. For example, Rustic Outfits, I think it was called. There were a few outfit mods, and I really wanted to use them because they looked great, but there was a small problem with them, and that problem was... I was getting strange texture popping. Not for the clothes. For, usually for snow, actually. So I, I would run around Winterhold and I would see all these nice new outfits, but every now and again, some bit of snow would change texture as I got close to it. And it was really weird. And it only happened when I had this mod installed. And I don't know if it's because I just... At that point, I had loaded up a lot of new mods, so there was too much going on, or whether it was just one of these weird flashpoints. I'm not 100% sure, but I decided to remove the mod for now, play a few episodes with the current load order, and then try putting it back in, because I did like the... It just made the clothing look a little better. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that, so there are some more mods going in, but for now... I'm sticking with a minor upgrade. I've added a few new mods only. I have updated pretty much all the mods as far as I can, apart from the ones I had to revert, as previously mentioned. Now, 
The major story, of course, is the weather mod. You've probably noticed things don't look that different. And that is because I'm still using Obsidian. It's the latest version of Obsidian. It's supposed to have less rain. And I've enabled seasons, so hopefully over time, the general weather patterns will change and give us some feeling of uh, variety. But it's still Obsidian. And the reason for that is I tried a lot of weather mods, but just couldn't find something that hit all the required points. I actually live streamed it. Um, we, we tried a load of things, including things like Cathedral, uh, Vivid, and loads of others. And I've tried a few off-camera as well, and I just couldn't find anything that was, well, perfect, or better than Obsidian. They either changed the look and feel of Skyrim a little too much. For example, they made it look a little warmer, a little dusty. As one person watching my stream said, it looks like Fallout New Vegas. And it, and it sort of did. If, if, you, if you'd moved Fallout New Vegas' weather and rocks and everything to Skyrim, that's how it would have looked. And there were quite a few of them like that. And it, was just, it just wasn't right for me. I know some people love that effect, but I, I just... It, it didn't feel... Nordic to me. So that that could just be, you know, because I live in Norway and so I'm I found it a little jarring, but you know, I, I can't help it if it bothers me. There were some like Cathedral that were absolutely spot on in feel, but they had this odd blur on the distant terrain. Obviously, they were doing that to try and hide the ugliness of the distant terrain, because even with Dindo Lord. Distant terrain is not gorgeous in this game. Um, but it was doing it on all objects at a certain distance. Even buildings that were, you know, not too far away. And it was too distracting. Once somebody had pointed it out to me, I could not stop seeing it. And it bothered me so very much that I, I, could, I had to stop. Which is a shame because overall I did quite like it. As you can see, Obsidian deals with distant terrain a little differently. It puts mist on the mountains and clouds, which I think does a slightly better job of hiding things than just blurring it. Because even with the mountains, I don't like mountains that look like I can't quite focus. Oh God, here we go. We still got flickering Z flicker on Windhelm. I don't think I'm ever going to fix that. I really don't. It's a shame. It really is mildly annoying. Because this is actually kind of a nice view. I also tried some ENBs. Five, to be precise. I tried the performance versions and I tried the full versions. The full versions looked okay. They, they, they did make things like the ambient occlusion look a little nicer. But the performance hit was way too much way way too much i was testing it in what turned out to be a bit of a hot spot for frame rate i was having trouble keeping 60 frames a second there anyway that was in winter hold at a certain spot but with the enb the full version it was dropping down to 40 and that's stationary not moving just looking you know at one building and basically, I was losing probably in, in the region of 15 frames a second. If there'd have been combat, loads of uh, enemies fighting in that spot, I mean, it would have been almost unplayable for me. To be honest with you, 40 frames a second is unplayable for me. I know a lot of you are that's like blasphemy to say, but it is for me. So, um, and I, it just, the, the, the slight improvement I saw in visuals was not worth how. Well, how horrible it felt to me. It also had a stutter. And when I changed to the performance version, the stutter was still there. Little micro stutter that was very annoying, even though the performance was better, but not brilliant. I still got three, four frames a second drop. Now I'm wondering whether I do have to um, update my system, but I think ENB's put more pressure on your graphics card and i've got a 1080 ti so i can't imagine i'm going to get that much of an improvement using an enb by upgrading my cpu 
So in the end, I, I looked at the EMB, the performance versions, and the performance versions don't really change much. They didn't seem to make the ambient occlusion much better. It, it didn't seem to make the shadows that much better. In fact, not noticeably better for me, the performance versions. They just seem to be essential stylistic changes, like to the colors, to the brightness, and to the contrast. And of course, you can achieve the same thing there with, in a variety of other ways that have no performance drop. If I just want more saturation and contrast, which I don't, I, I could just do that through the game's engine. That, that pop-in was quite aggressive, wasn't it? It is, it is possible that I should darken my distant terrain in Dindalod. I think it depends which direction you come from and which... If you're looking at the side that's got shadows, when it pops in, the shadows appear, so everything's a bit darker. If you approach from the side that's well lit, it probably looks more natural to pop in. It's always a trade-off, isn't it? There's always some sort of trade-off. Yes, there is. So anyway, overall... I just, I didn't find the ENBs convincing enough for the performance drop. And there's not really much more to say about that. Now, I'm not ruling out trying EMBs at a later date. Um, I, I mean, I would like to find something that makes the shadows around grass a little better, at better ambient occlusion. But I think I can tweak my any settings to, to push the shadows a little more. The, the grass shadows are a little... They, they sort of pop in very, very close. Um, so I think I could probably improve shadows through any tweaks that would have less effect liar, liar, on my performance. On so in the end, visually, fire. Chapter 4 is not going to look too different to Chapter 3, basically. Although I have kept my options somewhat open. Beyond that, there are a few other mods, a few minor mods of note for example this is dear diary a mod that replaces the journal and other ui elements with something that looks more like a journal and i think it's very very cool um it does if you want replace things like the magic book but although it looked cool a lot of us seem to agree that it was a little tougher to read it was a little tough to find items in your inventory, for example. And luckily, the mod does give you the option to place it only on the main menu, the journal, which I decided to use. I think it looks awesome. Um, it was just, it was, it was perhaps something that needed to get, you needed to get used to, but we, I was not used to it. And various other people in the chat were saying the same thing. It was, it was like a little tough to see. And... I think, I think that is it. From the looks of things, apart from perhaps maybe wanting to tweak my dindo lod so that it's a little darker. Although even then I'm not totally sure that's the right thing to do because it, it might then look funny from a different angle when running forward. And maybe looking into some any tweaks for my shadows. I honestly think I'm done, and I'm going to start recording Chapter 4 probably tomorrow. That's what I'm thinking. I was going to do it today, but time is running out today. Oh, I almost forgot. One question I did get whilst I was live streaming was whether or not I would consider using something like Apocalypse Spells, which is an overhaul mod created by NI the mod author who brought us Ordinator, the perk mod, and is it Andromeda, the Standing Stones mod? I think it is. And also Summer Mist, the Enchantments mod. He's also made one for races as well, but the, the spell overhaul mod he's made adds a bunch of new and very interesting looking spells. But I'm not going to be using it in this Let's Play, at least not yet. I need to do a little more investigation because, I mean, let's face it, Leonard is not a spellcaster anyway, although he occasionally dabbles if a spell does look, well, useful and unlikely to set him on fire or cover him in some sort of demonic goo. 
but and, and and I can tell you now, Apocalypse definitely qualifies as adding a lot of spells that don't fall into that category. It's actually a very interesting spell mod. But some of the mod, some of the spells it did add were um, a little powerful. You know what? Let's go. We spent an awful lot of time in this area. Let's go. Let's go somewhere else to do our testing. Um, yeah, some of the some of the spells worry me a little, and I need to check into them a bit more. An example of that would be Ghost Walk, which is a novice level illusion spell. And if I'm reading the description correctly, it seems to be a little overpowered. I'm, I'm I may be reading it incorrectly because it turns you invisible, which is in it of itself pretty powerful for a novice spell. I believe invisibility is an expert spell in the illusion school. It might be adept, but it's it's a reasonably high level spell. But this version of invisibility actually allows you to to teleport back to where you cast it when it breaks. And unless I'm misunderstanding that, that is insanely powerful. That is absolutely insanely powerful and would pretty much break this let's play because well i i can't think of a situation where leonard would not just constantly use that all the time non-stop because it means once he backstabs someone or picks their pocket he instantaneously teleports away after invisibility breaks that's just awesome Be beyond awesome to me that that Sounds like something that should be a master spell, even. I mean, I could imagine that being a master spell. Although, because it has teleportation, that's the sort of spell I, I think almost spans two different schools. I sort of feel like you should be a master of illusion and a master of alteration to do teleportation. Would teleportation be alteration? I always imagined it would be. I mean, it's not... It's not conjuration. It's not... Well, it, it would be if you were stepping through portals. But if you're just moving matter from one place to another, that, that would be alteration, right? I'm not very good at this, believe it or not. I mean, th th there used to be a mysticism school. What was, what was Mark and Recall? Was it mysticism? Was it mysticism? Was Mark and Recall mysticism or was it alteration? I'm not very good at this. No, I'm not. Um, but like, like I, anyway, so I, I sort of feel a spell like that would be really useful, but should actually be for somebody who has mastered a couple of different schools of magic. I certainly think it's the sort of spell that would never be in Leonard's reach. <laughs> let's let's put it that way, right? I mean. That would be that would be for your master sorcerers, not for dabblers, is what I'm saying. So anyway, that, that that's the answer to the to the question of whether I would use apocalypse is probably not, at least not without going through it with a fine tooth comb and either disabling or changing some of the requirements on on those spells. I mean, I've done that with some of the perks as well. In fact, even some of the vanilla perks, I've changed the requirements so, so that Leonard cannot get them. There's, there's a, um, a couple of perks in Sneak that seem somewhat magical in nature. And I've changed them myself to require, well, relevant experience in magic. So, for example, you need, I think, I think I made it so you need like 80 or 90 illusion for one of the perks and 90 alteration for the other. So, you know, basically, I've, I've put them out of Leonard's reach in a way that makes perfect sense. I've not actually made it impossible for him to get them. I've just made it bloody unlikely that he ever will. And that's just so that I can keep the, um, well, I can keep some tension in the Let's Play whilst allowing Leonard to become more powerful, just not allowing him to trivialize all the content. Basically, it's the same reason as the bow. <laughs> it's basically that. I've made certain things... Oh, actually, the bow's still the worst one. 
Although, I don't know, Ghost Walk would probably come close to the bow for overall usefulness. I mean, that, that was the reason for not using the bow was it, with a stealth character, there's almost no situation where stealth shoot with bow doesn't become the, uh, the best way to deal with everything. I, Ghost Walk, if I'm reading it correctly, looks like the sort of spell where that's the best thing to do in every circumstance. You know, dragon... Go, go invisible, wait for it to land, stab him back, teleport away before it breathes fire on you, etc., etc. I mean, it's it's just one of those... It's a hammer, isn't it? You know you know what what what, what is it? Well, actually, I'm, I'm probably ruining a metaphor. When all you have is a hammer, everything, every problem looks like a nail. Um, but <laughs> it's a magic hammer. When you have a magic hammer, every problem is a nail. Yeah, that was a terrible terrible metaphor <laughs> no I'm not putting it on a bloody t-shirt <laughs>